Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says in Isaiah 28, what did he say? He said, Whom will he teach knowledge? Eh? Who will he teach knowledge? Who? Who? Uh, uh, our members of this church are not here. I have made reference to that scripture for the past two, three weeks. Eh? When he says all tables are full of vomit. There's no place clean. And he added, who shall he teach knowledge? Who are they? Those who are weaned from the breast milk. Those who are weaned. And he says that the, the only people that he, God, will teach knowledge. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I think somewhere in Proverbs, it says, He that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall abide in the congregation of the dead. Who will he teach knowledge? Who will God teach knowledge? Who will he teach knowledge? He said, let's, let's read it. Maybe some people don't even know where I'm quoting. I think it's Isaiah 28. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 8. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness so that there is no place clean. I told you on Sunday, those of you who worship with us, when he said no place is clean, he's not talking of the dirty canal and gutters in Lagos. He's not talking of your physical environment. He's talking about the place where food is served. Spiritual food and the table of the Lord. Hallelujah. Is the pulpit. Where the word of God is served. He said, All tables are full of vomit. And there's no place, so that there's no place clean. Then, whom, verse 9, shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Which group of people? He said, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. They are weaned from the milk. And Apostle Paul says, as newborn babes, what should you do? Desire the sincere milk of the word of God. Amen. Desire the sincere milk of the word. The word of God is milk. When you are born again, what will give you strength is milk. But this milk must not be cow and get artificial man-made milk. The milk must come from the breast. And God has his own breast. The only people, hallelujah, that he will teach knowledge, they are those that have been weaned from hey, praise the Lord. From the breast. And Jehovah God, his attribute is one of his attributes, Jehovah El Shaddai, the strength giver. It also means the breasted one. He has the breast from which he gives out fresh milk to his children for nourishment and to have strength. And this breast is not only one breast, it's two breasts typified by a woman, her left breast and her right breast. Hallelujah. And the breast of God is the Old Testament and the New Testament. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
the Old Testament and the New Testament. So in essence, what he's saying here is that them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, they are those that can be taught knowledge. That is those who will have their source of faith. Your faith is hanging on the word. Those who make the Bible their guide. They are those that he will teach knowledge. And you must balance it. Not only from New Testament, but from Old Testament too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And not some man-made doctrines. Come back to the word. Come back to the Bible. Sister, go back to breastfeeding your baby. That is the end time message. Go back to the breast. Come back to the message. The message is come back to the word. Come back to the Bible. And anybody that will make this Bible your guide in your eternal journey, journey of the eternal destination from earth to glory, you will never miss it. You will never miss it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pastor Francis was telling me something yesterday. Amen. He was reminding me that when this ministry started, that he was among those that fought me. Hallelujah. He was just thanking God for my life. Because I told them, I said, some of you, you live your life, you live your Christian life depending on being guided by gift by vision, by prophecy, by dream. Amen. I say, I am different. I, I am guided by nothing else than the word. If you like, come and tell me anything. Tell me anything. God to say, God to say, God to say. If it is contrary to the Bible, I forget it. I forget it. Even if you tell me something, every day, if anything you tell me, they come to pass. Every day, anything you tell me, they come to pass. You are confirmed prophet. And then, you come tomorrow and tell me anything that is contrary to the Bible, I will say, keep it to yourself. Because I have a higher word than the one you are talking to me. God gave us a Bible as a guide. You drop that guy, the Satan will take over. And I want you to know that the most cardinal people in the church, they are gifted people. They can use that their gift to get anything they want. They can tell you, thus said the Lord, when it is not thus said the Lord, to get what they want. Then after, they will say, Father, forgive me. So you have to be very, very careful. Anointing is not evidence of conversion. And the mystery is there. Anointing can come an unconverted vessel. That is the mystery that people don't know. That's why William Abraham put it this way. He said, anointing, he said, gift without character. He said, satanic. Gift without character, he said, is satanic. Why I'm saying so, praise the Lord. Is to let you know the importance of the Bible. God gave us this Bible to be a guide. If you allow yourself to be misled, then you have yourself to be blamed because we are all literate, we can all read. Basically, everybody at least you have gone to school enough to read and write, except for a very little minority. So, Come back to the Bible. And this Bible covers every area of your life. Every area of your life. I am constrained to say some things today. Because I must let you know one fact. Church. God works by his principles. God works by his principles. Principles that he is even bound by. 
He is bound by those principles. For instance, concerning salvation, they, he said, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. For instance, this God that we serve, doesn't he have the power to just come and with one hand change every sinner to a saint? Does he have the power? Does he have the power? Does he have the power to stop, to, to, to just change you, remold you, and bring you to heaven? Doesn't he have the power? Oh, you are not answering because you are not sure. No, if you are sure of an answer, say it loud now. Why are they chuck you? Eh? He has a power. Amen. But he has a principle that says, every soul that sinner shall die. But he said, hallelujah, there's a provision to remit the sin. It is through the shedding of blood. So, he had to wait to fulfill that principle to redeem you and I. He sent his only begotten son to the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. The son cried one day, Father, if it is possible for this cup to pass away from me. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but your own will be done. No matter how he cried, my father, my father, why have thou forsaken me? A principle, a principle must be followed. Let me quickly add, amen. Hallelujah. Church, listen. Two things you must know about salvation, revelation. You must know the correct revelation of God's divine timetable for salvation. You must know it. And by God's grace, we have known it. Ah, it, it, do you know it? We know it. The bride knows it. From beginning till we enter eternity, God has shown it to us. Until we calculated according to the scripture, and we know how many more years is left for grace for the Gentiles before the rapture. It's in the Bible. Praise the Lord. We know the Antichrist. We know his address. We know his office. We know his church. We know it. It's in the Bible. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We know it. We know the three stages of the rapture. We know it. Apostle Paul told us three stages. And the first stage has started. And we are already in that first stage. The rapture has started. It has started. Oh. Rapture has started and people don't even know it. The last stage is when we shall disappear. People think that one day, Pia, boom, like this, boom, you go look for this coordinator, you don't go see him again. What happened? Rapture don't take place. That is the last stage. Apostle Paul called it the trump of God. Hallelujah. But before the trump of God, there are two other stages. The shout. Hallelujah. The voice of the archangel and the trump of God. First Thessalonians 4 16. We know it. Amen. And we know that before the rapture we strike, God will send us Elijah the prophet. We have caught the revelation by the last prophet's message and we know who we are and what we are raised up for. Praise the Lord. Back to the breast for the original world. Hallelujah. We know all this. Amen. Can I also tell you something? You may know all this. We know correct baptism, water baptism. We know correct process of justification. 
I will not correct baptism of the Holy Ghost. They told you speaking in tongue is evidence of the Holy Ghost. We know better that the speaking in tongue is not the evidence of the Holy Ghost. Because demons do they speak in tongues. Praise the Lord. We know all this mystery. Amen. But church, you may know all these mysteries and yet live a miserable life on earth because of another ignorance. You see? So, so a balanced Christian, a Christian to be balanced, must know God's divine timetable and must know the principles of living a peaceful, joyful life on earth here before we go to glory. But not too many Christians know it. We have two types in the Bible. Abraham and Lazarus. Jesus himself told us the story of Lazarus. Abraham died. Hallelujah. He was in paradise. Lazarus also died. He too was in paradise. But the two of them are in paradise. All of them while they were on earth, they believed the same God. They serve the same God. They will not sin. They live a very righteous life. But Lazarus was a poor man. Amen. Abraham was a wealthy man. So I want to imagine when they reach paradise, they go to Naktori. Eh? Abraham will say, Ah, this Bible is true. Ah, me, I enjoy you. I had money. I had cut. Look, I was feeding 300 men and women in my house every day, three times a day. So rich. Hey, Lazarus, good look at. Hey, 300 people, you alone for your house. Hey, I say, I know be quite, quite food, though. Better food. So, tell Eliezer of Damascus, no green leave me. Say, you go die for my house. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lazarus will tell Abraham, ah, I suffer. <laughs> ah, I suffer. Ah, I suffer. I suffer. So today, I, every morning I go near one rich man's house. The man wicked. You see my condition, you no know, great help me. Now the food where he throw it for dustbin, now they run. Go select, go chop. The man get dogs every time that my wound then they call lick. I know if you run away because if I run away, I go die of hunger. Then they lick my wound and they pack from the dustbin. Ah! Abraham will ask him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. In Acts chapter 19, Paul saw a group of Christians. There was something he saw about them that needed some question. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they told him, we don't even know what they call Holy Ghost. And he asked them, unto what then were you baptized? You don't know what is Holy Ghost and you say you were baptized. Which type of baptism did you do? Abraham is asking eh, eh, eh. Lazarus, come, 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 come. Why, 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 why will you live on earth, die a poor man? Wait, 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 wait. Lazarus, wait. Were you circumcised? He said, ah, the eighth day I was circumcised. <laughs> if you are circumcised, then you are part of the promise. Hey, I thought so too. I'm part of the promise. Abraham go look at me. Okay? No, 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 no. It is contrary. Wait, verse. You don't ever kill God for God. No. You, you, have you ever seen God? Lazarus, you don't ever see God. God don't ever visit you raw like this. He said, every time he did visit me. No, no. He visited me once. I see her once. He not come back. He not come back. Oh, now only once. That once where he come meet you, what do you do for her? Amen. Amen. Lazarus go say, what did I go do now? I don't do anything. 
And they complain and they tell and say, you know, they see my condition. You know, see my condition. They see my condition. You were busy complaining, complaining, lazy, lazy. You were busy complaining. Me, the first time I see God, job, I told Sarah, quick, quick, go kill God. He prepared one cup pepper soup. Hallelujah. So then, anytime God come, even if in another place, he won't go to assignment somewhere, he go remember that God, he go branch again. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is the God we are serving. He has a principle. Abraham operated that principle and he prospered on earth. Lazarus was busy. You know, I don't have anything. I don't have anything. I don't have anything. I don't have anything yet. Christ was at the temple and he saw a widow that put her last there and gave him recognition. I am saying something here. Hallelujah. There is a principle for prosperity. Catch this thing. No matter how many bottles of oil a man of God pours inside of you on top of you. You they bath with oil every day for prosperity, for prosperity. If you don't follow the principle, you are wasting your time. Amen. When the Bible says, bring in all your tithes and prove me now and see. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you a blessing, there will be no room enough to contain. And he added, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Hallelujah. When you study Bible, read, don't just read Bible. Study the impact of every statement the Spirit of God says. There are so many of us that have no reference point when the tempter comes around you. How can he rebuke the devourer in your life when you don't pay your tithe? I'm using that as an example. You see? Now, in this church, because of the way the denominationals have messed up the, the message, the sermons on prosperity and made use it as opportunity for personal gains, we have tried to tread carefully, tread carefully around the area of prosperity. When we are talking about prosperity, so that people who come here will not think that this is one of them again. And that is why the whole year we do this only once in a year. To create a week where we talk about what the Bible says concerning prosperity. Church, there is biblical prosperity. There is scriptural prosperity. I am telling you, hallelujah, poverty is a cause. Just like sickness is a cause. There are sicknesses that refuse to go because they are projected to the person. You go anywhere and you try to go by surgery, that is where you lose all your blood and die so that they will say, no, surgery kill you. There are, look, poverty is a cost. Now, church, listen. I am not talking about everybody being a millionaire. Any preacher that says all of you are going to be a millionaire, he's a liar. It is not possible. It is not possible oh, because in Israel everybody was not a millionaire. Everybody cannot be a millionaire. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But among us, the children of God, there will be millionaires. See, you see, this simple gospel Anytime I want to preach, you see me stressing and stressing when I want people to understand a point. Before I get to that point, you see me stressing and stressing and stressing and stressing to let the people understand why I want to say what I want to say. Because Christianity has been misrepresented before the people. 
and three quarters of you here came from one church or the other with all messed up interpretation of the Bible and Christianity. So we have to say some things to quicken you and make you listen to what we want to say. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Church, listen. I say, poverty is a cause. And nobody must allow a cause. But I repeat, I say, everybody cannot be a millionaire. Let me give you an, another example so that you understand what I mean. When the Bible says, he that was rich uh, became poor. Who was he referring to? Jesus. That through his poverty, we might become rich. Listen. Listen. There's another scripture. Hallelujah. He said, Mark 16. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out devils. In my name, they will speak a new tongue. They will lay hand upon the sick and the sick shall recover. They will drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. Church, listen. Amen. Amen. He says, this sign shall follow them that believe. Yet, that is why I read Isaiah 28. He said, precept must be upon precept. That is how to understand the word. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little, there a little. You will get the perfect picture. These signs shall follow them that believe. They will lay hand upon the sick and the sick shall recover. Yet in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he says, and to some he gave the gift. Manifestation of the spirit. What is it? One of it is healing. Some healing. He didn't say all healing. Some healing. Therefore, it, when he says, he says that, that, that uh, uh, this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out devils. They will lay hand upon the sea, the sea shall recover. It means, as we stay like this as a church, among us, there will be people that will have the gift for healing. There will be people that will have the gift to cast out devils. There will be people that will speak in tongues. There will be people here, so anointed situation where if they drink any deadly thing, not that you see now poison me this, make I show you say if I drink this thing, nothing will happen. Where I bring her, you go die for nothing. That is tempting God. That's tempting God. But if they put any poison for you on our wares, when you take that and drink, it will not hurt you. Praise the Lord. Now church, listen, you have to know that he who was rich became poor. That through his poverty, we might become rich. What he's saying there is, among us, there will be millionaires. Billionaires. Rich men and women in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. You have to catch that. But, amen. We have the assurance that the children of the righteous never beg for bread. We never beg for bread. When your condition reaches a stage where you cannot meet your bills, brother, you are still single 40 something years because you cannot afford bright price. It's a reproach. It's a reproach. Oh yes, it's a reproach. The time for your house rent is due and you cannot pay your house rent and the landlord is abusing you every day is a reproach. It's time for your children to go to school and you cannot pay their children's school fees is a reproach. It's a reproach. Your father is dead. You cannot travel home for shame that you have nothing to offer for the burial. It's a reproach. It's a reproach. Oh, It's a reproach. Until you will wake up in the morning with your children, you are not sure of how you will get the next meal to feed your family. It's a reproach. It's a reproach. Oh, it's a reproach. It must not be found among the children of God. It must not be found. And this week, 
is out to destroy that nonsense. War against poverty. War against reproach. Every reproach this week, the commander general <laughs> order a general has been sent from the defense headquarters of heaven to come here and tell Pharaoh, let my people Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, I got all the uniform complete. I am ready. I am ready. But no matter how I come here, we smash water. I pour oil on you. Amen. <laughs> you turn not only 360 degrees, but 360 degrees times six. If you don't jam that prayer with strict observance of God's principle of prosperity, it will never work for you. Third John, third John, to support what I'm saying. The third book of John, just before Revelation. Gaius Amen. I believe Gaius must be pastor of a church. I believe he should be a pastor of a church because John was writing this letter to him. To Gaius. Verse 2. Third John. It's only one chapter of 14 verses there. Verse 2. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. The prosperity of your soul is the revelation of God's divine timetable that you have caught and you are walking in it. That is the prosperity of your soul. Concerning the church that Gaius was pastoring, they were already in the truth. And he was very happy that they have refused or they have rejected all errors that tried to enter that church. And John was commending them. But he added, Hallelujah. He's adding that his prayer is that you, that you may also prosper and be in health. Just as you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you are sure if Christ comes tomorrow, you will go to heaven. He said, his prayer is that, look, you also deserve to be in health in the land of the living. That's right. That's right. Amen. And that you will prosper. Therefore, prosperity week that we are organizing is scriptural. And that is why this program always follows the baptism of the Holy Ghost program that we hold. When you have born again, you have received eternal life. The next thing is, you must live in divine health. And you, you must prosper. You must prosper as your soul is prospering. Your gift is manifesting. Your gift is manifesting. So also must you prosper too. So also must you dwell in health. Remember, when I say prosperity, I'm talking about all your needs met as at when due. Your needs be met. And whatever you are doing, you are supposed to prosper in it. If you're a businessman, you must be on top, not under. Hallelujah. Any area of your business in your market, you must be the leader. Because there's something God does. He uses everything around us to preach the gospel. That's why Satan uses everything around us to distract the people from listening to us. How can I come and stand here and teach you prosperity? When me, myself, na poverty, they're all around me. 
How can I tell you that God is a good God? How is he showing in me? When he says that you prosper even as your soul prospereth and be in health, be in health, I have told you everything I teach you is practical. I have experienced it. When I was coming in, in, in the car, we were coming, when I had to call um, Pastor Thomas to tell him that I would need to preach today because God told us we should do a battle on Friday and Sunday. So I cannot wear soldier uniform and be talking about prosperity. I should wear soldier uniform and fight battle. So I say, I will start a teaching today that I may conclude tomorrow. And I was telling my wife, when I finished talking with you on phone, I told my wife, I said, I have six conditions for prosperity. And I told my wife, I say, and my own, I say, I know read them for any book. Now he they tell me. I was telling my wife in the car. I say, it is practical. He told me and at the right hand down. And if you will follow what I tell you, I'm telling you we prosper because I am telling you from a personal experience. When I say God prospers, he prospers. Anytime I have a need, it has never failed. Never. Since I came my life to Christ in 1989. Never ever. Never. Inside the prison yard, when I gave my life to Christ, I had, I, I, I know people were visiting me on a daily basis. When they bring um, provisions and all these things, you know, uh, provisions, you know, provisions. And I saw Luke chapter 6 verse 38 where he says, give and it shall be given unto you. A baby Christian that just believed. He says, anytime, he said, to every man that asketh of thee, verse 30 of that Luke chapter 6, he said, give. From that time. Please, sir, if you give me milk, I say, see it there and I'll go and carry. Sir, if you get sugar, see it there and I'll go and carry. Sir, can I have soap? See some, there, there, there. Sir, I want biscuit. Sir, go and take it and see it there. Every man that asks it. When you come to me, I see a young boy, you are in the prison for how long? Two years, sir. Why are you in the prison? You are still awaiting trial. They have not tried you up to now. And they granted me bail, but I cannot meet the condition. What is the condition? There are some of them that are locked up there for two years because they told them, as at that time, 1988-89, they will tell me it's 200 naira. Bail condition. To give one charge and bail. 200 naira at that time. Some 2,000 naira, 1,000 naira. Is that all the reason you are in the prison for two years? Say, uh, I'll put money. Tell your person to come. Anybody, where the lawyer? Or you are going to court when? I'm going so, so, so there. Take when my provision is over, all I will do is, I will just stand in my room, close the door. Father, you say I shall give. I don't give the thing, don't finish. You see, Christianity is practical. It's practical. It's not sense. It's practical because this our God is real. He is real. He hears you. He sees you. He walks with you. He sleeps there on the bed there where you are sleeping. He's sitting down by the bed to watch you. Oh, how many people believe what I'm saying? The problem is some of us, we are putting up your hand for nothing. You don't believe? From 1989 till now, I have never fallen sick to go to the hospital. Never. He heals. That prayer is true. That you might prosper and be in health. But to prosper, there is a principle to follow. To be in health, there is a principle to follow. 
For your soul to prosper, there is a principle to follow. There is a word they teach you to follow. That's why we are trying to stress this today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will come back to that story in the course of this teaching. Because there is something deeper than that verse 2. All preachers, they end in verse 2. But go down. There is something deeper that is ignored. But when we come to that, I'll point it out for you. But for now, blessed be the name of the Lord. Our theme for this program is First Chronicles chapter 4. Let's read it. First Chronicles. The story of Jabez. Hallelujah. And I'll read from verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable. Some people are still looking for where Chronicles they. I didn't say Corinthians, so it's in the Old Testament. Chronicles. Not Corinthian. Chronicles. Like chronic, chronic is from the word chronic before you get chronicle. Chronic womanizer, chronic fornicator, chronic stingy person. <laughs> chronic. <laughs> there are people who are chronic givers. Chronic. Okay? Verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez. Hallelujah. Jabez. Jabez means sorrowful. Saying because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying. Oh that thou willest bless me indeed. And enlarge my coast. And that thy hand might be with me. And that thou wilt keep me from evil. That it may not grieve me. Three prayer requests here. Number one. Enlarge my coast. Thy hand be with me. And that thou wilt keep me from evil. That it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which is requested. The first one is enlarge my coast. I'll come to that. There is a principle for that. I'm coming to that. The next one is that thy hand might be with me. And that thou will keep me from evil. If the hand of God will be with you, there is a principle that will make God's hand to be with you. And the principle he said, without holiness. No man will see God. So you want God's hand to be upon you. Holiness. Let him be around you. And the next one that, that will keep me from evil. If you want God to keep you from evil, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The songwriter says, he says, I am saved whatsoever may betide me. Eh? In the hello of his hands, you have to remain there. If you leave the hello of God's hand, putting your trust in him and him alone, and turn your back against God and begin to put your trust in a human being, you are standing on the sinking sand. But for this program, enlarge my coast. We are here for my coast to be enlarged. And coast shall be enlarged. I say coast shall be enlarged. Can you tell your neighbor the Lord will enlarge your coast? Wait a now. Look at your neighbor eyeball to eyeball and give that prophecy. Tell another person. Tell your backyard neighbor. Okay. To the hearing of your neighbor, tell it to yourself. The Lord will enlarge my coast. My coast. You see, this one was louder than the one you were telling your neighbor. 
Eh? It was louder. When I said, tell your neighbor, you say it's much more. When I said, tell yourself now, hey, you add NG. Don't be selfish. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. For your cause to be enlarged, there are conditions you must fulfill. Number one, I told you, I said there are six of them. I'll say the much I can say now. We go into prayers and we continue tomorrow. Number one is Proverbs chapter six. Me, I no go suffer. I no go beg for bread. Me, I no go suffer. Oh. I no go beg for bread. Are we there? I'll read from verse 6 up to verse 11. Let's catch something there. He said, go to the ant. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6. Read it up to verse 11. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, lazy man, lazy woman. Go and look at the ant. Consider her ways and be wise. Which, having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? Why will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth and I want as an armed man. The first condition is diligence. Diligence and hard work. Diligence and hard work. Listen, church. It is God's own principle. Church, listen. There are two phases of a Christian's life. The first phase is when you just give your life to Christ newly. Amen. You become as a baby with a mother. Anytime the baby just wants anything, sometimes say, the mama go force the baby chop. You say, ah, for how many hours now this boy never chop? Go force him with all the tricks, even entice him. Entice and if you eat, eh, I will carry you go here. If you eat, eh, you gonna beg you, beg you, beg you, beg you, beg you. When you give a lot to Christ, before you pray, tap, answer. Oh, I love that man of Galilee. Deuteronomy 32 spoke about, I think I preached that sermon as the eagle's terrorist her nest. Try to get that message and understand how God, I think I titled it the way of an eagle. The way of an eagle. How the eagle deals with her young ones, that is how God deals with us. It's a very interesting message. And so you give your life to Christ. Chop, chop, chop. Immediately. But after some time, Second Corinthians chapter, five, even Romans chapter 1 verse 17, what does it say? It said, the just shall live by faith. Hebrews chapter 11 by 6, it says, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that cometh to him must believe that he is God and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Christians walk by faith. You have the faith muscles. William Abraham call it the sixth sense. There are five physical senses that enables us to, to, to contact the physical world around us. Remember that we are also spirit beings. And we live a life in the spirit and we live a life of the physical. For us to contact the physical, God gave us five senses. The eye, to see the sight, the smell from the nose, the taste from the mouth, the hearing 
from the ear and the feeling from the hand as you touch. So that you can contact here, physical world here. But, amen. There is the sixth sense to contact the spiritual. That sense is faith. You don't have that faith, you will be spiritually deficient. Deficient. Hallelujah. Faith. Amen. There is something you see by that sixth sense that makes you to call those things that be not as if they are. That's why you are always positive. When you say it is done, those who don't have that sense by which you saw it done, we tell you where is it done? Where? Where? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Don't worry. By the end of this year, I am moving to my house. And then meanwhile, you know even you are squatting with somebody. You are squatting with somebody. You don't even have your own house rent right yourself. Now you are saying, I will soon move to my house. I will soon move to my house. Amen. There is something the sixth sense has contacted. That the physical man or woman here cannot see it. So, so the first stage, amen, that you, you enter is that baby, mama, baby, mama, mama, baby, 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 mama, baby, mama, baby, baby, baby. After that stage, it does not last forever. After some time, the mother will stop. Kai! You should be able to do things on your own. No more diapers. This boy won't disgrace me. Four years old, you see the tie diapers. Hi! Bah, come on, that thing! Amen. Four years old, they are still giving you feeding bottle. Mommy, look. Mommy, look. The mama will say, this child want to disgrace me. Because it means the mother has not brought you up properly. Imagine a four-year-old boy saying, Mama, sit down, one sock breast. So it is with God. You reach a level. Jesus Christ went to a tree and spoke to that tree. No man eat a fruit from the hands of in, in, in Mark chapter 11. And he went away. The next day, the tree died from the root. And, and the next day, Peter called the attention of the master. See that tree that you spoke to? It's, it don't die. And Jesus was not surprised. It was not a testimony for Jesus. It was not a testimony for Jesus. He spoke it and went away. He was sure. And then, when he saw his disciples surprised, verse 23 there, he said, have faith in God. I told you sometime here, I said, the actual interpretation of what is written there is, have the God kind of faith. That is what is written there. Go to the lexicon and see the, the Hebrew and Greek lexicons. Have the God kind of faith. And remember, Genesis 1.26, we are made in the image of God. Praise the Lord. We are supposed to operate, you know, in the same principles. He created Adam and he said, have dominion over the earth. Have dominion over every creeping thing, everything. He took the authority and gave Adam. That authority is still available now for every Adam seed. It means if Adam didn't want any tree planted anywhere, he would say, hey, tree, die for them. Because God created the world by what? The spoken word. That is God's kind of faith. And he added, if thou shalt say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt your heart. That is God's kind of faith. But shall believe that what you say 
shall come to pass. He said, you will have what you say. God's kind of faith. God expects us to operate that type of faith. In every situation, every situation, the power of the spoken word. Faith in action. Faith in action. Believe it in your heart. Say it in your mouth. It shall come to pass. Don't say it before you believe. Oh. That means seeing before you believe. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. All the fruitful women. One, two, three, go. Fruitful women. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. Shall we go? That is the scripture I've given all those women looking for fruit of the womb. Who will wake up at the end of the month and they see messes. They say, hey, hey, again. So the thing no enter. We walk by faith, not by sight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God expects you to walk by faith. And faith requires diligence. It is that faith. He's saying, go to the hand, you sluggard. Don't you think, don't you ever think that you will ever sit at home after this prayer and job will come and look for you in the house. You are the one to go and look for job. Amen. Hallelujah. My driver was driving me out one day. I think during this week or so, I think on Sunday or which day or so, Tuesday, yes. He said, he saw a particular brother. And my driver was asking me, he said, sir, this man, you not get work. I said, why are you asking? He said, every day from morning to night, na church day. Every day from morning to night, na church day. What did happen? You say you be minister. You are more a minister than me, Abby. Why me I not stay here every day from morning to night, morning to night? Every day you wake up from your house, brrr, you come and sit down here. And some of you say, uh, God say, uh, He has called me. God has called me. God call Apostle Paul too. God call Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul say, This my hands minister to my needs. He say, He who doesn't walk should not eat. It is laziness. It's not color. It's not color. Brother, it's not color. It's a lazy spirit. There is time to be in the church and there is time to be in business. They say nothing is working because I have a call. They say I have a call. They say, they say I have a call. Church, listen. Listen, you know, all this nonsense. Minister telling some of these funny churches, kick that nonsense out. If you have a call, nobody will tell you, say you get a call. You cannot be confused if you have a call. It's because you don't know the meaning of call. If you know the meaning of call, call, who call you? God. Who can resist God? And who told you to serve God is difficult. And they suffer, they suffer because, because, because they say anything, anything I put hand, you know they walk. Anything, every prophet that I go. And these blind ministers out there, once there is a grace of God upon you in the spirit, when you come before them, they see a light around you, they say, ah! Do you know you're a pastor? And then you leave him, say, anywhere I go, they say, I'll be pastor. <laughs> Anywhere I go, they say I'll be pastor. Anywhere they say, they say I'll be pastor. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look, stop that mumu mumu something. Man must work. Man must work. That's why I told all the ministers in this church. I said, go and do something you know, for yourself. If not, number one, you go thief to so survive. You go lie to survive. You will cut corners to survive. You will take some risk to survive. You will enjoy your conscience by some things you do to survive. 
Because Satan will push you, push you, push you until you will fall. Church, okay, God to tell you, say, it's because you didn't answer God's call. That is why nothing, anything you do, your business is scatter. All the money they gave you is scatter. Okay, have you answered? Yes. I am making change now. <laughs> Amen. Oh yeah, now, if, you, if that is the reason, I think if you now agree, you begin to serve God every day, you change your seat from congregation to minister seat. And then every day, they hang it up. They, they, they do prayer every time. They go everywhere, they preach. I think you don't answer. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, make everything work for you now. It's a lie. There's nothing like that. See, full-time ministry is an evolution. Full-time ministry, understand my English. You evolve in the ministry, circumstances, exigencies of the ministry put you in such a way that you have no other time to do any other thing. You by yourself decide to make it full time because you truly have no other time to do any other thing. That is why you say you are full time. Or the church approaches you. See, we need you to be here fully. And you will give the church your condition. Every day, make I not do anything. Make I just they come here, they see people every day, they see people every day. Make I not go my shop again. Uh, the church, can you take care of me? I have four children. They must go to the best schools. I have my mother and my father. I have to send them pocket money every month. Will you give me a comfortable accommodation befitting my status? How will you take care of me? You say I should not walk. You will sit down and negotiate with the church. Praise the Lord. But for you to say, one prophet say, ah, your own is full time. And you are accepting it. It's evidence you are a lazy man, lazy woman. You are looking for something to hold on to before. Every day, you carry your coat. They wear, where they go? Even the shoe, you never change them up. They swear there they go. Where they go? Say be full time. You be full time. Full time not say it's a spirit of laziness. The laziness and laziness. Go to the ant. Why? The ant knows that during rainy season, I cannot come out. So during the summer, it is gathering all the food that will last throughout the rainy season. And he has no overseer. He has nobody to preach to him. He has no governor. He has no king. But he has sense. He has sense. That's what that scripture is saying. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. And verse 29. Diligence. Diligence. Proverbs 22 and verse 29. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. And let me also add something here. Because this message is for everybody. Especially those of us who are workers in the vineyard. Those of us who are ministers. Those of us who have a call of God upon us. Whatever you do, just as you are diligent in your business concerning the things of God, you must also be diligent. In your ministry, you must be diligent. If you look at the minister's seat sitting down there, they are empty today. I enter this hall by 9.30. This service is supposed to start 9. All ministers are supposed to be here today by 8 a.m. They are supposed to be here before 8. By 9.30, they 
they have not entered, they have sent message to the gate. That any minister coming out, they should tell the person to go back. Say, lazy man. Praise the Lord. Lazy. Any minister you don't see in the church, if you find any minister, you don't see her now. It's a lazy man. Send text to the person. Say, you lazy minister. Lazy minister. Any day I enter the pulpit before any minister, you will not enter the hall again. I'm going to teach them to be diligent. I'm going to force them to be diligent. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He says, See thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Don't forget to send that text, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Diligence. 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 Amen. Amen. Ecclesiastes. Now before I read Ecclesiastes, please go back to Romans. Let's talk about diligence. Finish diligence. Romans first. Romans chapter 12. One of the conditions... Apostle Paul, a revelated minister. Romans chapter 10. Let's read that one first. Romans chapter 10. This is the way he put it. In chapter 12 and 1 verse 11. Romans chapter 12. You see, this is the way he put it. Verse 10 and verse 11. Verse 10 and verse 11. He said, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another not slothful in business. Slothfulness is laziness. Fervent in the spirit. Serving the Lord. Do you understand what he's saying there? In your business, you should not be slothful. And you must be fervent in the spirit. Serving God. Ah, may God grant you understanding of what we are trying to say. The first condition therefore is Diligence is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And a man that is not slothful, he will stand before kings. Your hard work will give you notice. Oh, yes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hard work. The second condition. For your course to be enlarged is in Proverbs chapter 3. Put God first is the second condition. Proverbs chapter 3. Are we there? It's a Bible study, so I'm not rushing it because you must know it, you must hear it. Proverbs chapter 3. And I'll read it from verse 5. Put God first. Verse 5, he say, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. What did he say you should do? Trust. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. All thy heart. Put your trust in him, and lean not Unto thine own understanding in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be held to thy navel, held to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. My emphasis here is don't lean on your own understanding. Don't you ever think that you are smart. In everything you do, he say, acknowledge God. That's why it's expected that before you do anything, pray first. Pray first. Always put God first. God first. 
you want to digress, diverse into another business. Don't just think it's a good idea. Pray first. Lean not unto your own understanding. He said, in all thy ways, acknowledge God. In everything you do, acknowledge. Always know that you can succeed only if God is involved in it. Christian, before occultic people will do anything, they go to the occultic kingdom and make sacrifices and make inquiries. Don't you ever put your trust on a man. Don't you ever think that this year you will make it because your brother is now the governor. Don't you ever do that. I have told you, men, men fellowship, when we went to camp, I told you something in the camp. I said, from my own experience, I have gotten to know that all these people who are in political offices and they are in offices where they can make money, they don't like dealing with people who know them. People who have been close to them. Their family members. Their friends that they used to go to beer parlor and drink before. Once they reach that level, they don't want you to know the secret of their wealth. Amen. So if your brother is a governor, show me one person that the brother was a governor and he became his partner in anything like that. Lie, lie. Lie, lie. I'm telling you now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have known them. I'm speaking from experience. I have friends that were governors during the military. My own very cosmetics. Why you going to say they will phone you? Moses, you don't want to come and see me. Eh? You know, very soon I will leave this place. You don't want to come and see me. You will take off and go. You will enter motor with him, go around. You go chop with him for dining table. You go do anything. You say, oh, but which business you want to give me now? He say, ah, wait now, wait now, wait now. Wait now, wait now, wait now. Wait now, ah, ah, you know, ah, ah. When you are going, he will say, ADC, hey, hey, find something for Alu. They will give you small something. Amen. Before my sense can come, I say, this man will not give you anything. <laughs> Stop wasting yourself, yourself traveling to anywhere. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Until, unless you are, you, so, so, every day, don't put your trust on anybody. But if you will acknowledge God, acknowledge God, that God can talk to him. Before he know what, he will give you what you want before he realizes it. Because you did not say your mind is on him. But you consider him there as God placing him there for your benefit. If you approach it that way, before you go and meet him, even though you have just spoken to him on phone, you will still go and kneel down and pray, Papa, he phoned me now, see make I go. Father, go ahead of me. You are acknowledging God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. All, all, all thy ways. That is the reason why Christians, when you build a house before you move in there, you dedicate it. That's the reason why you buy a car before you start using it, you dedicate it. You are acknowledging God. Hallelujah. That is why after you have paid your dowry, before you take the woman to your house, you come to the altar. You are acknowledging him for that marriage. Don't make it the other way around. From the house, from the village there, you pay dowry, you reach, carry a call house. Now they chop every day, they chop, chop. Then small time, you say, hey, our wedding, which the we fix our wedding, huh, honey? Which the we do this wedding now? Which wedding again? It's because you don't even know the meaning of wedding. On your way home, you pass through the altar. You have acknowledged him. Then, the man of God makes that pronouncement. What God has joined together. Where does he join you? Because you have recognized him. 
praise the Lord. Lean not unto your own understanding. Don't you ever think you are smart. You can do it. Don't say I am intelligent. Any maths they give me, I will write it, I will pass. Any exams I go, I will write it, I will pass. These days, it is not the best that receives the job. It is he whom God is behind that receives the job. Because everybody going there is going with one connection or the other. You, which connection do you have? You are leaning on your own understanding. It will fail. It will fail. It will fail. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Another way of leaning, I mean of putting God first, is in Exodus chapter 23. Putting God first. Exodus chapter 23. If you are there, I will read one verse. It's a law. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I go there now? Exodus chapter 23. I'm reading verse 19. The first of the first fruits. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see it a kid in his mother's milk. So the emphasis there is the first fruits. See the way he put it. The first of the first fruits of thy land. The first of the first fruits of thy land. Listen, because this teaching has been messed up. Listen carefully. The first of the first fruits of thy land, they belong to God. You will bring into the house of the Lord thy God. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 26. Hallelujah. Chapter 26. It's a law. Amen. And it shall be from verse 1. And it shall be when thou art come in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance and possess it and dwellest therein. Listen. I read that verse again. Verse 1. Listen. Listen. Because somebody, you are going to enter your land of possession. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe what I'm saying? See, after this program, the Lord is going to establish somebody permanently. Permanently. Here how he put it in verse 1. He says, And it shall be when thou art come in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and you possess it, and you dwell therein, verse 2, that thou shalt take of the first of all the fruit of the land of the earth, which thou shalt bring of thy land, that the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall put it in a basket, and shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. And you can read it down up to verse 15 to get a picture. But because of time, let me explain. Go to Proverbs again, Proverbs chapter 3. Because that is where sometimes we, we miss it. Where I read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruits of all thine increase. Church, listen. Listen. It is the first fruit of thine increase. So, if you do that, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty. And thy presence shall burst out with new wine. There are churches that teach that the beginning of every year, 
the first money you make that year, your salary for that year, you take it as your first fruit for the year. And you bring it and drop it at the altar. Church, there is no teaching like that in the Bible. It is a misrepresentation and I believe it is a willful misinterpretation to make personal gain from the people. Why I say so is do you know the God we are serving? The whole salary for the month you carry them. Go give God. Where do you go chop that month? Amen. That is not the meaning of that statement. Hallelujah. Do I have time for this today? Church, listen. That is not the meaning. Oh, that is not the meaning of that statement. He said, "Bring the first of your first fruit." What is your first fruit? First fruit has to do with the initial investment you are making. You have been unemployed all this while. And you suddenly get a job. Your first salary is your first fruit. You have been working all these years. I mean, unemployed all these years. Suddenly, your first job. See, in my place where we come from, and I expect every true child to do the same thing. Where we come from, once you have graduated, the first employment you have, that salary you receive, you will take out of that money and bring it, not all, a reasonable amount out of that money and bring it to your father to bless you. In my area, that is what we do. Bring it. If your father is not around, the most senior person in the family to go and tell him, I have now gotten a job and they have started salary. This is it. I have brought part of it to you. It is part of it. Not all. That's why he said, the first of the first fruit. A part of the first fruit. You are to bring a part of the first fruit. Not total. A part of it. That investment that you made. The first in, in, in inflow. The first inflow that you receive. From that initial investment. The investment that you made. That business you entered into. After you do that. No more first fruit offering again concerning that business. Amen. Concerning that job, every year is not your new beginning in that work. If you change a job and you go to another job, you will do the same first fruit again in that new job. Get part of it. Amen. Get part of it. See. Ha, 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 ha. Can we open Bible? First fruit. That's why. Win from the breast. Old Testament makes us understand New Testament. New Testament makes us understand Old Testament. Don't just run away from from uh, 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 <laughs> don't just run away with one scripture from the New Testament, from the Old Testament and run off with it. Balance it line upon line, precept upon precept. Go to Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus, Leviticus, Leve, Leve, Levi. I 
our eyes of understanding. He has opened up. Are we there? Chapter 23. Amen. Hallelujah. There are some ordinances in that chapter. We have the Passover, the unleavened bread, the Pentecost, they are all feasts. And you know that every feast ordinance in the Old Testament was speaking of something in the new. Passover feasts. Amen. They pass over from Egypt to the promised land. And they pass through the Red Sea. Amen. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, we pass over from death to life. The Passover feast. And they used a Passover lamb. Passover lamb. Hallelujah. And Christ is the lamb of God. That was slain for our Passover. First Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7 says so. It says for even Christ our Passover. Jesus Christ our Passover. Through Jesus Christ we pass over from death to life. From poverty to abundance. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so also with Pentecost. What is Pentecost? Pentecost was a feast. 49, observe 40, 49 uh, 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 Sabbath, 49 times 7 is how many? I mean, uh, 7 uh, 7 times 7 is how many? 7 Sabbaths. The 7th Sabbath, amen. Praise the Lord. The day following the 7th Sabbath, the day following the seventh Sabbath in calculation, which will make it the 50th day, is a celebration called Pentecost. And it was speaking of something. What was it speaking of? Christ resurrected. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But before the resurrection, there is a feast that is before the Pentecost, I mean. Before Pentecost, there is a feast that is observed known as the feast of first fruits or called wave offering. Amen. That is what you see in Deuteronomy chapter, I mean sorry, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 9. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you become into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then you shall bring a sheaf, a sheaf, there, a little bundle, a handful of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. A sheaf of the first fruit, that is, your harvest for that year, get a handful of it. Not all. A handful of it. Bring it to the priest because that is the temple where he placed his name. Amen. A sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord. You wave it like this. Wave it. To be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. He will wave it when? The next day after the Sabbath, Sabbath is Saturday. On Sunday, he is to wave it. Hey, Jesus. Praise the Lord. After that feast, amen. The next, the next ordinance that follows feast is the feast of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Watch it. Christ Jesus he died. Amen. When he resurrected, blessed be the name of the Lord. When he resurrected, hallelujah. How many days did he spend on earth 
The Bible said he spent how many days? 40 days. 40 days he spent on the earth. On after the 40th day on the mount he took off. 10 days later who oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. They were gathered for the feast of Pentecost in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. They gathered for the feast of Pentecost. And the feast of Pentecost is always celebrated. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When is it always celebrated? Hallelujah. The next day after the Sabbath. As they gathered. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't know how we'll explain this. Because it is taking me away from prosperity. But people should know what the first fruit is all about. Church, let me go straight to the point. Let me not go straight anywhere. First, let me stay with prosperity. We have too many things to talk in this Bible. Let me stay with prosperity. Church, listen. Jesus Christ, when did he resurrect? In Matthew chapter 27. When he resurrected, hallelujah, the Bible says that the dead saints that were in the grave, they resurrected with him. Is that correct? Praise the Lord. That resurrection, the Bible referred to Jesus Christ as the first begotten from the dead. God came to earth to harvest his dead children. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God came down for the harvest. The first harvest from the dead was Christ Jesus himself. That's why 1 Corinthians 15 referred to him as the order of resurrection. He said Christ the first fruits. He's the first because there are others too that will resurrect with him later you and I. Part of that was speaking of that first fruit. That's why it's the first fruit. Church, let me end just by saying the first fruit is a part of your first income that you receive. Acknowledge him first. Acknowledge God in all your ways. Put him first it is a law. He said, the first one that opened the matrix, yes, belonged to him. Hallelujah. When he said belong to him, it's for you not to take him and go and dump him at the, at the temple. No, you offer him to God. And anytime God needs him, Papa, Mama, don't disturb. But see still your picking. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm saying so because so many of these teachings have been messed up. For instance, when it comes to tithe, I explained to you in the camp, there is a teaching that says if you are owing tithe, how many percent are you supposed to add when you want to pay? Eh? Not 10%. A fifth part is 20%. It's 20%. Go to Leviticus chapter 30. Chapter 27. Chapter 27. Chapter 27, sorry. Hallelujah. This is where they get it. Verse 13. Verse 13. The Leviticus chapter 27 verse 13. But if he will redeem at, I mean if he will at all redeem it, that is the tithe, then he shall add a fifth part thereof unto thy estimation. The fifth part there is 20%. Now, verse, go to verse 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. 
it is holy unto the Lord. And if a man will at all redeem out of his tithe, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. I think that's the scripture. And so, they teach, I have read it in books, books of men of God that you have so much respect and regard for. I read it. Amen. But church, I am not better than them, but the grace of God gives me understanding of this Bible anytime I read it. So when you see me speaking, I speak authoritatively because I am not a copy-copy preacher. I preach from what he grants me understanding of. What does it mean to redeem? What they are saying, let me make it clear again. What they are saying is, if you are owing your tithes, January till June, you have not paid your tithes, you want to pay back now, that you must calculate it and add 20% to it and then bring it because you are owing. And when you hear them teaching, they teach it as if they are actually saying something. That is not the meaning. The word there, the key word there is redeem. What is the meaning of redeem? Redeem is to buy back something that was yours before, but you lost it. That's the meaning of redeem. Why is God redeeming us now? From the foundation of the world, we were his. But something happened that he lost us to Satan. That brought about the process of redeeming us back to him. But there is the price of redemption. He paid the price to redeem us. If you don't belong to him, you cannot be redeemed. So, first and foremost, it belonged to you. You lost it under any circumstance. Now, you want to have it back. The process of having it back is called redeem. The tithe you are paying, that scripture is referring to those who are paying tithe using objects, particularly animals. Maybe you have a particular breed of animal that you know is very fertile and produces and you will need the milk, you will need it to join to produce for you. Now you are forced to give it as part of your tithe according to the law. Now, but the law says, if you want to keep that animal because you need it, you will come to the priest. They will find the market value of that goat. How much is it sold in the market? It is sold for one uh, uh, thousand naira. One, one thousand naira. He said, the cost market price is 1,000 Naira. He said, add 20% of 1,000 Naira. That will give it what? 200 Naira. The total cost will now become 1,200 Naira. Give the priest 1,200 Naira. Now you can redeem the animal. That is the meaning of that verse. Praise the Lord. Not if you are owing. God himself says that he forbids us from lending out our money to usury. It's a law. If you are owing me, you must not pay me with interest. Is it God that you will owe and pay him with interest? Praise the Lord. All this confusion, it's not even confusion. They do it willingly because they know what they will gain by it. Anything in the scripture that these carnal preachers will use to make money for themselves, they will stand there and hook on it and deceive the people and collect money. And innocently, you are bringing and thinking that you are fulfilling Bible. Meanwhile, God has no part in what you are doing. Amen. You have not been paying your tithe. Church, listen. The principle is clear. If you don't pay your tithe, Satan will come and collect it. So, I have not been paying my tithe from January till now. Pastor, what should I do? Forget it. You have paid it. 
You have paid it. Something else has collected everything. God wants only 10%, but when you refuse to pay, Satan will come. Sometimes it's 90% he will collect. So don't bother. Don't bother to say, I am owing. So from January, I better make a pay my time from January. Don't bother. Don't bother. Don't bother. Don't bother. Don't bother. You have already paid. That's the truth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because, number one, God looks at you as a robber. You have robbed God. Why God takes tight so seriously is because he, God, in the Old Testament, he designed that a whole tribe will not have land. Their own will be, they will be eaten because they ordained them to walk at the temple. So he set aside a law for every Jew from the tithe you pay, the tribe of Levi, they will be feeding from the tithe. He said, bring in all your tithe that there may be food, meat in my storehouse. Who are those that will eat it? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Levites. So if you don't bring your tithe, God is angry with you because you are starving a Levi. Three categories of people that he said they are to use the tithe to take care of. The first one, he said, the Levi, the stranger, the motherless, uh, fatherless, the orphans, and the stranger in your midst. That tithe is to be used to take care of them. So anytime you refuse to pay your tithe, you are looking for trouble from God because God designed certain people to be taken care of. The needs of the church will be taken care of from your tithes. That's why any pastor that comes and collects all the tithes to himself and say, Nahim believer, all the tithes must come to him. He's a robber, he's a thief. Praise the Lord. So many of us, the hammer of God is upon us and we don't know it because you don't pay your tithes. It's a commandment. So if you don't pay your tithe, you have sinned. Not paying your tithe is as sinful as committing fornication, as committing adultery. Sin is sin. So what are you supposed to do? Is to repent and begin to pay. Don't bother yourself and say, all the one I never paid this year, make I pay now. No. Unless by the nature of your income, you decide that it is at the end of the year, you or a particular month, you put together to know how much you have made to pay your tithe. That's okay. If you keep faithfully keep it. But if not, as soon as you make that money, pay your tithe. As soon as you make that money, pay your tithe. Church, listen again. You don't pay your tithe from capital. Don't pay tithe from capital. Tithe is 10% of the increase. The emphasis is increase profit. So, now listen. What is capital? What I mean is, if I need 1 million naira to start a business, I have calculated what I need is 1 million naira, and I come to ask you, my brother, my uncle, and you give me 1 million naira, I cannot pay tithe from it because it is capital. If you pay tithe, it will not meet the need anymore. Do you understand? So what you do is you will invest that one million but the first any profit you make from it, make sure you pay your tithe from that profit. Praise the Lord. Now let me, let me balance it. Listen. Listen. But if you did not make such projection, you just stay and your brother notice that you need to be established and calls you and say, come, take this two million naira and go and establish yourself something. That two million naira, you pay tight from it. Do you understand? It is an increase. It is not capital. You are the one now to decide what to do with it, with whatever else. The first thing is register that money with God. It was a gift from you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because so many confusion when it comes to tithe. 
Some of you have asked me before, what of those of us when they do our own daily, 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 because now as, as they sell, sometimes they take to buy the okra what we go use for night. So at the end of the day, I don't know as I don't as I go take, I don't as I go take, I don't as I go take, 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 take. Church, when you are doing your business, always acknowledge that you are not alone doing that business. That business belongs to you and God. Therefore, and you are the managing director, you must operate a good accounting system. You must operate a good accounting system. So that you can tell God, now what I make with this, give or take. Give or take. Because you know, every item you sell, you put a mark off there. You bought okra at mile 12 for 3 naira. You they sell them 20 naira for a Joshua bus stop. So you know how much you added on top. So don't say, me, I don't know because me, I don't know, me, I don't know, me, I don't know. You know, you know, you know. If not, when the thing enter your capital, the thing they cry. Ah, this thing now, oh, my capital don't enter, the thing don't enter my capital. How you know say enter your capital? Praise the Lord. So don't be wiser than God. No man can cheat God. So that you can tell God, Lord, I have been faithful in my business. Lord, I have been diligent in my business. Why should my business fold up? Why should they drive me from this shop? Why should they do this? Why should they do this? Praise the Lord. Now I'm talking now. Some people are sleeping. Continue sleeping. Continue sleeping. No, no, say, now, now, now that demon, where they confuse you, then they make you sleep now so that you will not hear. Faith come by hearing. Hear it so that you will never have faith to pray the principle of God. Now, where they preach, if I say I have finished, the sleep will disappear. Pew. Okay, we shall continue tomorrow. I have finished. I have finished for today. For today, we shall continue tomorrow. For today, is put God first. Put God first. Put God first. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Put God first. Poor person. You were poor. Now you're supposed to practice this past anybody. That's why that widow of Zarephtha, Elijah, uh, was sent to him. Is it Elijah or Elijah? I think it's Elijah. Elijah, a servant of God, was sent to a poor woman in a time of famine. They did, God did not send him to a, a rich woman or a rich man's house that still had abundance, the last bit that woman had at home was the person that God said, go. People are not sensitive in the spirit to see God in action. Hallelujah. What did they do? He said, woman. Amen. What did you get for her? Because hungry was disturbing that prophet. He said, nothing now. You don't know what to happen for land. Just this small powder here. We don't small oil. I want to go make uh, 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 masa. Who knows masa? Uh, what do they call that? The masa. My wife likes masa so much. Mm -hmm. There's somewhere in uh, in Jerry that she always go to buy Ma masa. I don't know how they call it. It's, it's, a, it's a northern delicacy. Eh? They use flour and just, you know, put it on a round, round pot. <laughs> round, round, round hole like that. <laughs> they call it masa. That's what that woman was going to make. Say little cake. And then the firewood that we even cook it, she didn't need too much of firewood. Just two sticks to tell you how small the flour was. He said, just two sticks. You just bend, put fire there, go heat her up. Before the firewood, don't finish. The cake, don't finish. And after that, no more hope. See, there are situations you face like that. There are some offerings that you are asked to give that you know, if you give, you know you have no more hope anywhere. A young man was in my office on Sunday. I don't know if he's here today. Another sister, a sister too. During offering on Sunday, a sister came and said, a voice told her that she should take her handset. The only answer she has to make in contact is she should drop it in the offering box. 
She dropped it. As she stood, I was looking at me. Because she has said she's confused. I don't drop her. Okay, what am I going to use a call now? She shall not get to buy another phone. After service, I was in my office. A young man came and said that during the service, a voice spoke to her that he should empty all his pocket and put in the offering box. He said he offered, he, he emptied everything and put. Now he's on his way going out again. The voice spoke. Now this kind of young boys, when they walk out with the earphone, you know, some people, they know they use earphone again. Now one wire, when they connect, connect. You can see that they walk out like, they're going to talk. Let's talk. You can see whether they're mad, they're crazy, they're crazy. You don't know what I'm saying. Now why they talk to? Now that kind of person with the headphone, he said, the Lord said you should go and take that phone and give it to the pastor. He came. I was telling him, I said, all that you had, you put for offering. He said, eh. so how are you going to go home? He said, I don't know. He said, God will provide. I said, you're going out now to start begging to go home. You are sure it's God that spoke to you. He said, he wanted to ignore. He said the voice warned him. I said, but I have phone. I don't need phone. He said, you should bring it to me. I collected it. I just knew that God is about to do something for that young man. I am spiritual enough. So I had to bring, I said, okay, don't bring. I said, take 1,000 naira, take for your transport. Take, <laughs> make you at least reach home. Because he emptied everything. Praise the Lord. I am sure that young man, he looks like a student. Is he here today? I am sure there's something God wants to do with him. Where is he? Eh? You are the one. Eh? Have you found out why God says you do it? Not yet. Not yet. When yes, it happens, please come and tell me. Okay, sir. Eh? I don't know where your phone is. I gave Jerry. <laughs> I don't know whether Jerry gave it to his wife. <laughs> eh? It's in the office. No, give it to somebody to use it. That's somebody to use it. Amen. That's somebody to use it. Praise the Lord. I make it as a principle. And all of you ministers, when somebody dash you anything, before you dash it out, use it. Even if it's one day, if it's a cloth, use it. If it is shoe, use it. If it is not your size, it's a different thing. But if it's your size, if you can adjust it to your size, just wear it, use it before you give it out. There's a reason for it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is how that woman of Zarephtha explained her condition to Elijah. Elijah. Elijah then. He saw saying, ah, this is wrong revelation. How can God send me to a woman that has no food to eat? I said I should come here that she will take care of me. He was more spiritual than that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He was more spiritual. Eh? Eh? Another sermon is going on at the back here. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, eh? You are catching me something. Eh? Come now. Alpha, did the Lord say you should empty your pocket and give me? <laughs> I was telling uh, daddy that what the uh, pastor just said now is from above. Yes. Somebody gave me something. I went and gave it out. And that night the Lord came and warned me that why did I give it out? I should have worn it. That's why when another man brought one heavy big suit for me. Oversized. <laughs> Oversized. On Sunday, so the Lord said I should put it on like that. So I put it on and I came and said, that is how the person will be blessed. Yes. I, I have always known that. I have always known that. Praise the Lord. So, so that's why you see some kind of cloth where I go wear. Some of you want me to dress like one young boy. I go dress like that. Come. Anywhere they go. Now you give me make a wear. <laughs> Amen. It's a revelation. It's a revelation. Not only us. Anybody that dashes you something, use it before you give it out. Make sure you use it before you give it out. There is a blessing that flows from your using it to that person. Praise the Lord. And finally, before I round up, Elijah told the man, the woman, prepare that your last meal for me first put God first. Can you, can you do it? 
the way you smile, <laughs> your smile is a mischievous smile. You are saying that if not me, I'm not gonna give a move. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, but it's a difficult thing. No, let's, let, let's be honest. Will you give in time of famine the last thing in the house? But you know, in Luke chapter 4, the Lord Jesus Christ told those Pharisees, He said, There were other widows in Zarephtha, in Israel at that time. He said, But he, God, did not send Elijah to any other widow but to that one as Zarephtha. Why? Because there are some people that once they know, they hear it is thus said the Lord, they will do it. They will do it. Once they know, because when he said, do it for me first, he did not wait. He said, for this is thus said the Lord. If you do it, that your pot will never dry. Your oil will never cease. That your flower will never cease. Food will never cease in this house. And the woman obeyed. Went and prepared the food for God first. God first. Tell your neighbor God first. Tell your neighbor God first. See, any money you make, let me tell you something. Any money you make is a secret for prosperity. I'm telling you, it's what I practice. Any money you make, before you go and do any monumental thing for yourself, the first money you make, big money you make, before you go and start buying land, start the construction in your village, go and buy one expensive car, before you begin to announce to the whole world that you have arrived, make sure you take part of that money and do something substantial for God. Register that your breakthrough first. I have done it. And it works. I don't give other people's example. I give only my own. The unfortunate thing is that anytime I give my own example of actions I have taken that have brought blessing upon me, after the service, come and see requests. Pastor, I need your assistance. Pastor, I need your help. Pastor, I am a fertile ground. Pastor, try me and see my God. So in me. Pastor, I am teaching you to give. What you are catching is how to beg or where to beg from. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I give, I use my own example. The house of Stephanus was addicted to giving. I am also addicted to giving. Why? Because there is a blessing in it. God's provided way is what I am telling you now. Put God first. And why will you not put God first? Why will you put him last? It's funny. If you have a fear of God, every day it will be God first before you before you do anything, God first. The fear of God. Secondly, the love of God. The love of God will make you think of him always and what you can do to make him happy. That's the truth. Anyway, we shall continue that teaching tomorrow. Many more. I've talked only two. I told you there are six. Praise the Lord. I will not answer any question. Pick your water. Okay, before your water, pick your envelope. Let me see whether you understood what I teach now. <laughs> Pick a building envelope. Put God first. Tight is God first. Building offering is God first. Building offering. Your contribution. If you don't have envelope, please wave your hand. They will give you. Please stand up so that they can see you. If you don't have envelope. If you don't have envelope, stand up so that they can see you and give it to you. Please, who are those giving?